Hi, my name is Sandeep Mukherjee and I'm a 3D printing master here at the Invention Studio. Um, welcome to 3D printing training. So here at the studio, we've got five different types of printers. Um, to start off with, we've got our general use fleet printers, which are Ultimaker 3s. They're best for just everyday parts that you might see users come in and try to print. Um, they're versatile, but they're not exactly exceptional in terms of high quality, but they're fast enough in order to get parts in and out of the studio as quick as possible. And over here, similar to the Ultimaker 3, we have the Ultimaker S5. Uh, the biggest caveat of this printer is its uh, greater build volume. Um, in addition, it's also capable of printing some more exotic materials, such as brass fill and wood fill, because it's capable of handling uh, uh, different types of nozzles. Um, if we go around the back over here, uh, we can see our Stratasys Cloud 9. This printer is uh, best for mass production. What it's capable of doing is printing just one part over and over and over again um, without any further user interaction. And then if we follow me over this way, we come to our SLA printers. Um, SLA printers, uh, SLA stands for stereolithography or Resin printers, as we normally call them here at the studio, are Formlabs 3s and Formlabs 2s. Um, think iPhone 8 to iPhone 10 sort of upgrade. But essentially, uh, these, are, these printers, their strength comes from their capability of producing extremely high detail levels of print. Um, and that's due to the way they work, which is because of the laser that comes underneath and is very precise at how it makes the part. Um, in addition, we also have access to several different types of engineering resins and standard resins um, that really enhance most prints beyond what you normally can do, especially with the Ultimaker 3s. Uh, and then finally, we have our Mark Forge printer, our Mark Forge Mark II, which is a printer that is uh, capable of printing with something called continuous fiber reinforcement. What it does is that it, it prints with this layer of uh, a nylon composite called Onyx and then reinforces each layer with um, strands of a specific fiber. The fibers come in four types. There's carbon fiber, Kevlar, fiberglass, and high temperature resistance fiber fiberglass. And so what happens is that some of those material properties from those fibers gets imbued into your part, thereby giving it um, more properties than just a standard FDM print. In order to access our professional printers, uh, you can reach out to the 3D Printing Master's email or use our website to send in your file and have it printed professionally. The next step in the checklist is changing the material on an Ultimaker. This is the main menu that you find uh, on a printer. If you want to change, go and scroll down using this wheel over here to material slash print core. Uh, we're going to change up material one, but you can also change up material two as necessary. But we'll stick with material one for now. Uh, click on that and then you can just hit change and that will initialize the printer to change the material out. What you'll see in a second is that it's going to pull the material all the way out through the back. You can see it going up the Bowden tube and it's going to unspool out in the back. Once the printer has pushed out the old filament, uh, you can go ahead and take it out. After you take the material off the printer, um, if you want to use the same spool again, you can just work with the same spool, uh, which we're going to do, but you can always find another spool if we're out of filament or another color is specifically requested. The next steps are that you take your new spool and you have to make a angled cut with the snipper tools. Right there. Snipper tools or flush cutters. Make the cut. You want this nice angled tip like that. Put it back into place. Now you want the filament spooling so that this part is pointed upwards. Otherwise it won't work. In order to push the filament into space, you want to lift this tab up, find the collet at the bottom and just push it through. I like to push it up until I can see a certain amount of filament through. That really means that it's caught in there and it's gone through. Um, I like to also just spool this in reverse in order to just tension up the entire system. So uh, now that we've gone ahead and changed it at the back, um, this screen up here 
it basically runs you through exactly what we just did, but we're going to use this as a sort of checklist to make sure that we did everything correctly. So remove the material spool from the spool holder. We did that, so hit confirm. Uh, place the new spool with the installed material guide. Hit that, we, we did it. And it says material not detected. We need to select our material. Click on select material. 90% of the time, you'll be using PLA. So go down and select PLA. Again, using the scroll wheel to navigate. It says PLA material selected, insert in feeder one and confirm. We've already done that. Hit confirm. And now it's going to heat up the print core and pull the material up through the Bowden tube, almost in reverse to what it did in the first step. The next part in the checklist talks about when to apply glue and why, what it's used for. So glue is applied to the build plate to help with that first layer to really adhere um, so that the rest of the print has a good structure to work off of. And then when you want to apply glue, you want to apply glue um, when the plate is like completely clean and you're seeing a part trying to print and it's not printing. Apply a quick layer of glue and it'll help that first layer stick down. There are some instances, however, where a build plate is so covered in previous layers of glue that it actually hinders the part's ability to attach to the build plate. In that case, you're gonna to wanna to clean off that build plate, put it back in, and then try the part again. So the next part in the 3D printing process is software focused. So we're going to be working in Cura, which is this software that we use to convert STLs into G codes. So you send a file type of STL into Cura. Cura will then slice that file and send it as a G code to the 3D printers. Now let's open up puzzle.stl and skull.stl. So you can press this open bar over here. Now we open up the files. We can click on both of these files using control or shift to open it. And now we've got both of our uh, STLs on the build plate here. So we want to look at um, where supports are on these parts. Now the easiest way to determine where supports are, are where these red areas are. So on this skull, we're gonna need under the cheekbones, under the eye sockets, and a little bit by the nostrils. Whereas for puzzle.stl, there's this section here. Now if you notice, this um, overhang right here does not seem to require supports, and that's because these printers are capable of doing something called bridging. Bridging is where the printer is capable of printing across a short enough surface and still maintain a straight line without the use of support, which is helpful if you're still going for that nice surface finish without a support inset. In the event that we want to try to print a part and not put support there, the way that works is you click on your part, then you go down to this menu icon right here, click on that, and then wherever you want to not put support, let's say we don't want supports under the eyes, we can double click in that section. And now this block right here is going to be devoid of support. Uh, the next step in the checklist is to open up the ditto file, which we will do. The first thing that they want you to do is scale the ditto to 25%. So the scaling function is over here. It's the second one. And if you notice, all these are currently at 100%. While uniform scaling is enabled, if you change this to 25%, it will change all the dimensions to 25%. If I change it to 225%, it will change all the dimensions to 225%. In this case, we only want 25%. That's what we're gonna leave it as. Next, we need to look at layer height, infill, and wall thickness. So layer height, um, we can access through the settings bar over here. Uh, layer height is determined over here, so we can go as small as 0.06 millimeters as the layer height. What that'll get you is a very fine print. However, it will take the longest amount of time to print. Whereas you can also do 0.2 millimeters, which will look much rougher, but you will get a faster print overall. Um, most prints can pretty much be printed between 0.1 and 0.15. Extremely fine prints usually require 0.06, but prints that are trying to be optimized for speed usually go for 0.2. Um, most engineering prints default to 0.15. 
Infill is the amount of material that goes inside of the print as it's being printed to provide its structural support. You can range all the way from zero to 20. Um, you do not ever need more than 20 because once you start getting above that value, you hit almost a diminishing returns in terms of overall structureness and you're wasting filament at that point. So keep it between zero and 20. Um, I've noticed that most file, most prints that are basic structural components um, are good with 10. Most prints that are more focused on aesthetics and won't be load bearing as much, zero to five, and prints that need to be structurally strong go up to 20. Um, you can also get a little bit more specific with your infill by going to custom, which gives you an access to a whole bunch more settings over here. So infill will be over here. We can change the infill density over here. Say we wanna make it 5% for now, as well as the infill pattern. Um, another thing that we need to cover is wall thickness, which can be found under the shell. So wall thickness over here determines the thickness of the wall of the print. Um, what that does is that it's a way of overriding the strength of the print without having to deal with too much infill. Now, I recommend that you use wall thickness depending upon how small your part is because Smaller parts, very large wall thicknesses will mess with your overall dimensioning, whereas larger parts, um, you can get away with a little bit of a thicker wall thickness because it doesn't have as much impact on the overall dimensions of the part. Uh, the next thing that we look at is build plate adhesion. Um, if we go down to build plate adhesion over here, you can see that we have several different options. Um, we have skirts, which essentially just put out like one or two sections of filament around the part, um, around the part like this. There's the brim, which goes ahead and prints essentially an extended first layer. So it goes starting at the print part itself, extends out maybe a little bit and then goes around it. And then a raft, which is a few layers thick in order to really adhere the part to the build plate. Parts that, re parts that are long and flat or have, or have very small contact points on the um, bill plate require, um, b uh, require brims. And if it really, really requires strong adhesion, go for a raft, but that's almost never necessary. Um, a part like this, like the Ditto that's small and doesn't require extremely strong adhesion, you can get away with a skirt, no problem. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go down to the profiles here and select standard plus. Now these profiles that we have over here are Invention Studio specific. Um, they are primarily to uh, just give settings to users to immediately set according to uh, whatever they need. So for example, high reliability just means that you'll get parts that are more reliable and work extremely well. Ludicrous speed bit of a joke, but obviously it will maximize the speed of your print. Speed one, similar sort of situation, whereas precision X is extremely high precision. We're just gonna select standard plus, and we're gonna discard the changes that we made. With that set, um, we need to make a few more changes where we're going to go to infill, set it to 0%. Um, then we're going to go to wall thickness, which is again under shell change that to 0.8 millimeters, not 0.08 millimeters. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and for this print, just disable supports, which you can find under the support section where it says generate support, unclick it. You can also change support in the more recommended settings through here. So once that's all set, you can just go ahead and hit slice. And what that will do is it will convert our 3D print our STL file into a G-code file. Um, if it says nine minutes, you did it right. Next thing we wanna do is go ahead and hit save to file, um, not save to removable drive. Otherwise that will get a different sort of file type than what we want. Um, save it somewhere where you know you can find it on the computer again. I usually try to save it on the downloads folder, but we're gonna save it here. Um, overwrite, yes, we wanna overwrite it. And so, what you've just done is the entire section of Cura, and the next part will be working in 3D Printer OS. 
So the next step is uploading our print to 3D Printer OS. That's what we here at the Invention Studio use to control uh, the printer and print workflow so that we can keep track of filament, users, print times, prints, all the important statistics necessary with running any 3D printing in a makerspace. So uh, we have 3D printing, 3D Printer OS over here. You can also access this on your own computers, but we're gonna access it on the studio computer for now. Um, click on 3D Printer OS, that'll take you to this sign-in page. Click on single sign-on, type in Georgia, Georgia Institute of Technology, select it, and it'll take you to the GT login page. Sign in with your GT credentials, and it will take you to a screen somewhat similar to this, um, as someone who's printed several things at the Image Studio, mine looks a lot more invested than yours does. However, we want to go ahead and upload our G code file to 3D Printer OS. So click upload up in the top left over here, hit choose file. Make sure it's set to single file, not project, otherwise it won't work. Click on choose file. Click on your file that you just sliced. Now you wanna make sure that it says Cura and it says Ultimaker 3. If those both check out, click save and go to my files. Uh, wait for the progress bar to finish up. Now, if you want to send it to the queue, send it to the fleet printer's queue, you hit print, and then as a non-PI, you will see that you only have access to fleet printers industrial. All you have to do in that case is just hit queue. Fill out this, in this case we're just personal, and you can go ahead and send it to the queue. So you'll get this message. Now, if we go to printers, which you can find up here in the center of the dashboard, we can find our part in the queue. Um, it's under my email and it's labeled as accordingly. So if we want to send this part to the printer now from the PI side, as a user, you will only see everything blurred out. But as a PI, we, we have access to all the printers uh, in the space. So we wanna send it to a printer. Um, look, at, look at your file. Uh, click on more, click move, and now look at your open printers. So bed not clear means that the bed isn't clear and you'll need to take a part off. However, just look directly at the idle. That means that it's free to print. So we're gonna try to send it to Katara and just hit print. And that way it's going to send the part to the printer for it to go through and run. So we've sent our part to the printer here to get printed. Notice how it says preparing to print 3D printer OS and uh, it'll start printing once it's done heating up and going through all of its checks. Um, there are instances, however, where parts fail and your part that you wanted to get printed doesn't succeed. Um, in those cases, there's often a very telltale sign the part is failing or is going to fail. So uh, in the case of that, so say the printer nozzle's clogged or there's a catch in the back um, and it's printing in the air and no part or filament is coming out the way you want it to, you go ahead and you click abort or cancel on 3D Printer OS to cancel the part. Um, but in this case, we're gonna let this print out so that we can complete our training. All right, so uh, this isn't the part we printed, but it is a part that's completed, so we're gonna take it out. It, when we wanna take a part off the build plate for our own use, you can use these two tabs over here to open up and release the build plate. You can pull the build plate out. Bring it to a flat surface. So you wanna use a paint scraper to try to get the part off the build plate and you wanna use a safe, you wanna use safety gloves to protect your hands in the process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the safety glove on um, and we're going to start scraping at the part to take it off. So we're gonna use the paint scraper and take it right off. Very, very, very important, never ever scrape in the direction of your fingers, otherwise, you could uh, end up needing stitches as these paint scrapers are extremely sharp. Now we've got our part off. We're gonna take our build plate and put it back in the reverse order of the way we put it in. Slide it in, close the tabs, make sure that it's locked in securely and make sure you hit print removed so that the next print can start without any issue. Thanks for tuning into 3D printing training here at the Inventor Studio. We hope to see you around. Have a nice rest of your day.